Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this scene inside UE5. So this is a beginner friendly video. I'm going to explain everything along the way. And this is completely playable. So if I just play the game, you can see that the character can move around in the scene. So this is a pretty good video for people who are starting out with the engine. And one more thing, thank you to all the people who support the channel on Patreon. It really helps a lot. If you want to support the channel, head over to the description. So if you want to download all my project files, you can go there. Link is in the description. Also, before you start making this, make sure that you download the free starter project. The starter file contains all the assets that you need for this video. So make sure that you download that first. Okay, now when that's set, let's actually jump into the video. So after downloading that starter project file, just open it. And here you will see a main level. So this is a main level. Just double click to open it. And this is completely blank. So we are going to start from scratch. First, let's create some light. So under the lights panel, I'm going to add a directional light. And you can go to the rotate tool and you can rotate this somewhat like this. So the directional light is basically a sun lamp. Next, we are going to add the flow. So to add a flow, go in the terrain tab. So the green thing that you are seeing is the landscape that you will get after you create it. And in the left hand side panel, you have all these settings. So you have all the settings for landscapes. You can change the size and everything, but I'm going to keep it to the default settings and I'm going to create my landscape. Okay. After creating the landscape, you can go to the select mode again and you can move the sun up. After that, I'm going to add a skylight and a skylight is very important. So the skylight basically emulates the indirect bounce lighting in your scene. So just add that. So our basic lighting setup is done. Now let's add some additional things that work with this lighting setup. So first I'm going to add a sky atmosphere and this thing is going to emulate the atmosphere of a planet. So make sure that you change all these lights to movable and also turn on the real time capture in the skylight. And then you can select the sunlight and to enable the atmosphere, just turn on that atmospheric sun. After that, let's change the lighting of the scene. So let's rotate this sun lamp. So you can use this shortcut key. And after you press that, just move your mouse and essentially you can rotate your sun. So it's that easy. Now we are going to add some volumetric clouds. So you can add some volumetric clouds. And finally, to bind all of this together to complete this lighting setup, let's add one more thing. And that's quite important. And that is the exponential height fog. So the fog is going to blend everything together. So in the exponential fog right here, we have some settings. So we can reduce the density of this fog. Also a very important thing to note is the exponential height fog works on the height. So this is a height fog. So if you move it up or down on the Z axis, you will notice that there is a change in the fall off of this fog. And now we are done with the lighting. So select all of them. So shift select all of them and just move it down. You could also group them further into folders, but I'm not going to do that. Okay. Now let's actually add the house. So for the house, we are going to go in the landscape and first we are going to sculpt our terrain. So you can select the sculpt brush and just click in the scene. And that is going to raise a section of your landscape. After that, I'm going to select the flatten tool. So that will basically level the whole area. So I'm going to just make a raised area so that we can position our focus element there. And after you have your shape, after you have sculpted your terrain, you need to smooth the edges. You can select the smooth tool and it's very easy. Just uh, brush it 
on these edges the smooth tool is quite useful now it's time to import some quicksil mega scans assets so you can press control space and that is going to bring up the content browser and the content browser is where you store all your assets and everything so you can right click on your content browser and you will see a lot of options to import many things we are interested in the quicksil mega scans assets so just click that and i've downloaded this texture so download this material this is our ground material so just add that in your scene after that you can download the rocks asset as well now let's go to the ground material folder and just double click to open it now this material particularly has a lot of things that are wrong with this so let's fix some of them the first thing is that this material is very glossy so you can fix that by changing the specularity of this so if you turn down the specularity to 0 that means it's completely rough so specularity is basically the glossiness of the material so you can change it to a value of 0.01 just save that and close that now let's add that to a landscape so select the landscape go in the landscape material and you can just search for that by its name and there you go it's applied to a landscape but now we have another problem the tiling is totally wrong so it's repeating a lot so to change that you can open up the material go in the tiling and reduce the x and the y tiling and there you go we have fixed that problem so now the repetition is not quite noticeable okay now in the exponential height fog i'm going to turn on the volumetric fog and this volumetric fog setting will give you a very realistic look so just turn that on so after we have turned on the volumetric fog we are going to add our house and this model has a license of cc attribution i believe so you can use this model but you will need to give credit if you are using it commercially so this model was created by this guy right here so just add the model in your scene like that and just position it on the raised surface that we created now you can switch between the movement and the rotation tools by the w key and the e key so just move it up something like that looks good now i wanted to address a very big issue and a lot of beginners are facing this issue inside unreal engine 5 so it's basically the auto exposure thing so whenever you are going to look at a bright surface like a bright object unreal engine automatically reduces the brightness of your scene and whenever you look at a dark surface unreal engine will automatically increase the exposure but i want constant lighting for this scene like i want completely constant lighting so to fix that issue you can simply add a post processing effect so just add that in your scene so this object is basically a empty object and it has a bounding box as you can see so whatever is in this bounding box will be affected by these effects so first of all we need to add this post processing to the whole scene one way is to just scale the cube like just scale it large but the other way is to turn on an option so you can select the post processing and you can just turn on the infinite extents now it is going to be applied to the whole level after that search for exposure and the settings that we need are the minimum brightness and maximum brightness so as you can see by default these both settings are different but we change these settings to the same value so for instance i'm going to change it to a value of 1 this is going to make sure that our lighting is constant and as you can see if you do that your scene is automatically darkened and this will depend on the intensity of your directional light so if you want to further tweak the lighting you can go to the directional light and you could maybe reduce or increase the intensity of your light depending on your scene so now after that the fun part we are going to add some foliage so we are going to add some grass and some trees so if you go to the foliage folder you will see these three objects so this is the grass mesh and these are the trees 
So these are from the realistic forest pack, which is completely free on the Epic Store. So now we are going to add these in our scene. You will think that just drag these trees in the scene and it's done. And many people do this. They just drag their foliage in the scene. And this is completely fine if you want to hand place a few objects. But if you do this with a lot of objects, you will face a huge problem of optimization later on. So these objects will basically have their own draw call. So they will have their own render draw call. So if you are into shaders, you will know what I'm speaking. So we need to convert this mesh. We need to convert the static mesh into a foliage asset. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Just go to the foliage panel. In the left hand side, you will see all the tools. Now we just need to drop our foliage there in the foliage section. So control space to open that shift, select all of them and just drag them there. So now these are converted into foliage assets. And the advantage here is these foliage assets will have one render draw call. So it's really optimized foliage assets are rendered in a different way, in a different buffer. And after you have done that, you will notice that these objects have a small tick mark option. So just select all of them first and just disable them. Now select the asset that you want to paint first and enable that. So I'm going to enable the grass asset and down there, you will see all the settings for that. So now if you just click in the scene, you will see that we have some grass in the scene. So we need to tweak some settings. So I'm just going to undo that and you can change the density here. So you could also change the paint density and that is the density for the paint brush. Now you could also give it some randomization. So under the scale, you can maybe give it a minimum scale of 0.6 and a maximum scale of 0.1. So this is the range that Unreal Engine will use to give it a random scale. And randomization really helps when you are making natural environments. So just play with all these settings and once you are fine with this, you could just click in the scene to paint grass. So just notice here, we have painted nearly 15,000 grass meshes. Now there are some ways to optimize this. First way is to turn off the shadows. And if you do that, you can see it makes a huge difference on your scene. If your system can't handle it, you can always do that. And the next setting here is called cull distance. So this is basically the object culling option and this will allow you to render objects based on the camera distance. So for example, if your camera is closer to an object, it is going to render that object. And if your camera is farther away, it is not going to render that object. So it is simply going to remove it. And again, this is a trade-off between performance and quality. So if your system can't handle it, you could always do that just to point that out. Okay, now let's add some trees. So first just disable everything, then enable the tree mesh. I'm going to enable only one tree first, then select the single tool. And the single tool is going to allow you to place one instance of the mesh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place some trees by hand. So I'm going to hand place these trees near my playable area. And then we are going to use the paint brush to add trees in the background. So just add them in using the paint tool. Here I'm going back and forth with the density and with the scale and the radius of our brush. One important setting here is the radius down there. So the radius is the distance uh, between these individual trees. So just add trees in the background. Okay, so our scene is nearly complete. This looks pretty good. Finally, I'm going to add that rock asset that we imported from Quixel. So just add them in your scene, rotate them, position them wherever you like. So this is how easy it is to create something like this inside UE5. And don't forget, this is completely dynamic and this is totally playable. So this is a playable level. So you could just import the third person template and you could just play this. So pretty cool. I hope you learned something in this video. 
if you want more videos like this please subscribe to the channel also check out my patreon page and if you followed this tutorial make sure that you post that on instagram i'll see you in the next video